Oh, welcome back. Now, when I bought this lathe, it didn't come with any accessories at all. Uh, it just came with a, a chuck and a four-way tool post. So, one of the things that's been on my list of things to do for a very long time is to make a fixed steady. So, first off, I'm going to rough out this um, V for the ways. Uh, I'm going to do that on the bandsaw. Using a 20 millimeter ripper cutter. Um, let's see how we get on. Okay, so that's all I could do in that setup. So I've machined this edge and this one along here, and I've got the V cut. So that's the first slot cut, um, 16 mil wide, five mil deep, just as a guide to allow these to run up and down. Let's rotate to this one, which will be at 45 degrees from there. That's the angle that ends up as. Lock the table. Probably going to do five millimeters at a time. Let's see how that goes. So you can see there, as I was coming round, uh, the cutter's cutting on both sides in the slot, but then we get into this hole and it's suddenly climb cutting. So it um, it grabbed, jumped around. Um, so I then pulled back so that I was um, cutting on both sides a bit more and, and then drove back in uh, and carried on. So hopefully when I go in this direction, it won't grab as badly because I won't be, uh, won't be climbing um, on the outside. So I've now finished chopping out this as much as I can. There's still obviously a full thickness beneath this washer and screw because I can't get to that. So I'm going to have to re-clamp it to do that section. So the rotary table is already centred, I'm just using the dead centre to point to where the centre point mark is on my, on my circle there. So if I just lock that off, I can bolt that in position there, hopefully, 
we can cut out that middle and clean everything up. So we're at this stage now, um, I now need to make a slot so I can get a spanner in here to do the bolt up to clamp it to the bed. And obviously to clamp it to the bed I'm going to need a T-nut, which I have already made. That goes in here. So there we are, that's sort of roughly where we've got to machine. I'm going to Take that hole out, I think. Possibly make it a bit wider so we can swing the swing the spanner. So I've now got to put a hole through here so I can put the nuts in here. Now this is way too tall for any of my machines without messing about. So as it's one hole and it's not very thick, um, I'm just going to do it with a hand drill. So I've cleaned up the hole. Let's uh, see if it fits. And a fit, just about. I think that uh, I think that works. Okay, I'm going to make the uh, guide pins now. That's what I call them anyway. They're the bits that go in the slot um, and have the thread to adjust these up and down. I've got to make three of these. Broken tap turned into a bottoming tap. Bollocks. There's something to be said for cheap Chinese taps. When they break, you can get them out again without damaging the thread. Just finished grinding that back so I can um, break it in the next one. So now I'm going to do the flats and the um, cross hole. This vise has got a nice V in it, so I can just clamp that.
So machining that in the way I did result in these little curved shoulders, which are obviously not optimal. I could rotate the part on the mill and try and get these faces level and square it off with the mill, or I could just file it. So I just want to clean up that face, so I'm going to use my hex collet block and a 12mm collet. So that will go on there, obviously adjust a screw through there, I'm going to put a hole through there to hold it in place, um, just got to make another two of those. So I made the other two guide pins off camera um, and now I'm going to make the adjuster screws. So these steady fingers are getting a bearing on the end. Um, I haven't drawn this up because it's just a shouldered pin, nine millimeters on the thick end and then eight millimeters, they're eight millimeter ball bearings. Um, and just push them through. And then that's held in position. So on the real ones of these, which I'm probably gonna make out of aluminium, I will probably pin these in place, but for the moment, That'll do. They're just pinned, um, just friction held in place. All right, so there we are. I've made three of everything. 
and that's the last adjusty screw. Now the one thing that this doesn't do yet is um, pull the sliders back. That would need a, a little half moon washer and a circlip or something in there which I can do at some stage um, but I can adjust it in nicely. They're all sliding nicely. Um, so one thing I left to do is try it out. So I've had a go at setting it up. Um, yeah, dials in quite nicely. This obviously isn't how you use it. The steady should be the other side of the carriage. Uh, this piece of pipe I need to cut down and square off um, for a future project. I haven't worked out how long it's going to be yet. Just wanted to see how this behaved and how sturdy it was. Um, the the plastic fingers wibble around a bit. This finger's wiggling a bit, and that one. The tube's not entirely round, so maybe something to do with that. But hopefully, the when I make some metal ones, they'll be a bit sturdier. Yeah, pleased with that. Seems to um, set up nicely. The fact that they're at 90 degree or you know, 45 degrees instead of 60 degrees uh, is a bit annoying, but I don't think it'll make too much of a difference. So there it is, I finally made it. The incentive of having a upcoming project that would benefit from it. There's always another way to skin the cat, but um, I thought that it was time that I actually got around to doing it. It was a it was actually a tougher project than I thought, just a lot of <laughs> a lot of machining steel, which is less enjoyable than aluminium. So I hope you enjoyed that um, and hopefully before too long you'll see this thing in action. Thanks for watching.